Hey spooky friends, I decided this week we would have a ghost tale to get us in the Halloween spirit. We're going to talk about the Queen Mary, but more specifically its most famous phantom residence. But in order to understand why, we have to start at the beginning. So get cozy, it's time for a haunted history lesson. The RMS Queen Mary was a British ocean liner that sailed primarily from 1936 to 1967 for the Cunard White Star Line. It was built by John Brown and Company in Clydebank, Scotland. Queen Mary sailed her maiden voyage on May 27, 1936. She boasted five dining areas and lounges, two cocktail bars and swimming pools, a grand ballroom, a squash court, and even a small hospital. The Queen Mary set a benchmark for transatlantic travel, which the rich and famous considered as the only civilized way to travel. For three years, the Queen Mary was the grandest ocean liner in the world, carrying Hollywood celebrities like Bob Hope and Clark Gable, and royalty like the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, and also dignitaries like Winston Churchill. But when the Queen Mary docked in New York in September on 1939, it would be the last time she would carry civilian passengers for many years. As World War II started, the Queen Mary transformed into a troop ship. It was painted a camouflage gray color and stripped of its luxurious amenities. She was dubbed the Grey Ghost due to her stealth and stark color. The Queen Mary was the largest and fastest troop ship to sail, capable of transporting as many as 16,000 troops at 30 knots. On October 2, 1942, the Queen Mary accidentally sank one of her escort ships, slicing right through the light cruiser HS Kuroka off the Irish coast with the loss of 239 lives. She was carrying thousands of Americans of the 29th Infantry Division to join the Allied forces in Europe. Due to the risk of U-boat attacks, the Queen Mary was to not stop under any circumstances and steamed onwards with a fractured stem. After the end of World War II, the Queen Mary began a 10-month retrofitting process which would return the ship to her original glory. On July 21, 1947, the Queen Mary resumed regular passenger travel across the Atlantic Ocean and continued to do so for nearly two more decades. The increasing popularity of air travel helped signal the end of an era for the Queen Mary. By 1965, the entire Cunard fleet was operating at a loss and they decided it was time to retire and sell the Queen Mary. On October 31, 1967, the Queen Mary departed on her final cruise, arriving in Long Beach, California on December 9, 1967, where the ship has been docked ever since. The Queen Mary is now a floating hotel, attraction, and home to three restaurants. Now, with the history out of the way, let's talk about what we're really here for. The historic floating hotel attracts thousands of visitors every year, but it has also attracted a number of unearthly guests. Some believe the Queen Mary is one of the most haunted places in the world with as many as 150 known spirits lurking upon the ship. Over the past 60 years, the Queen Mary has been the site of at least 49 reported deaths, not to mention having gone through the terror of war. So it almost comes as to no surprise that spectral spirits continue to roam the rooms and hallways. Obviously, we can't discuss all 150 hauntings. We would be here all day. So let's focus on some of their famous residents. John Petter. Located 50 feet below water level is the engine room, which is said to be a hotbed of paranormal activity. Most notable though, is the ghost of John Petter. John was an 18 year old crew member who unfortunately perished while on the job. During a routine watertight check on door number 13 in 1966, the young man was crushed to death by the door. The ghost of the young man is seen dressed in blue coveralls and sporting a beard. He is often spotted walking the length of the shaft alley before disappearing at door number 13. He is also known to leave greasy handprints in areas he roams. Door number 13 remains one of the ship's most popular attractions for ghost hunters. Jackie. Another commonly seen spirit is that of Jackie. Jackie is a little girl who is seen in the second class pool room. Allegedly, the girl drowned in the pool during the ship's sailing days and she refuses to move on. Her voice, as well as sounds of laughter, have been heard and captured here. Many crew members have also reported finding wet footprints along the pool and hearing splashing noises, even though the pool has been drained for a long time. 
The White Lady Guests and workers alike have reported sightings of the White Lady, a guest who checked in, but never checked out. She is seen floating at the end of the first-class lounge called the Queen Salon, dressed in a white evening gown. She has been seen aboard the ship for more than half a century. Grumpy Grumpy is arguably one of the Queen Mary's most memorable ghosts. His identity is not known, but he is called the Growling Ghost due to his tendency to growl at visitors. He is said to lurk in a room under the stairs near the first class swimming pool, and sometimes he is found in the boiler room. William Eric Stark Stark had a tragic end while working on the Mary. He had consumed a drink he mixed with tetrachloride, having confused it for gin. The man would die several days later after falling into a coma. His ghost is often seen in his personal quarters as well as walking around on the sun deck. Room B340 I figured I would end this with probably Queen Mary's most famous room, B340. The room seems to draw all negative energy and supernatural forces on the ship, similar to a black hole. It is unsure what attracts the entities to this specific room. The history is unknown. Some say a man went crazy and murdered his whole family, but current crew members don't believe this to be a true story. Guests and crew members have had experiences when in this room, such as vertigo, sudden illness, lights turning on and off, knocking, and even some being physically assaulted. Most guests who check into B340 check back out before morning. There are plenty of videos and stories online of people's experiences with B340, and I urge you to look into them if you're curious. The room, can the room can still be checked out today. It comes equipped with tools such as a Ouija board in order for guests to communicate with spirits. But B340 isn't the only haunted room. Odd occurrences have been happening in a number of first-class staterooms such as running water, lights turning on in the middle of the night, phones ringing in the early morning with no one on the other line, and other phenomenons include the sounds of distinct knocks, door slamming, high-pitched squeals, drastic temperature changes, and the aromas of smells long past. So, regardless if you're a paranormal enthusiast or a skeptic, the Queen Mary boasts a rich historic reputation, and who knows? It may just make a believer out of you. Hey there, friends. I know today's video was different from the past few weeks, but hey, we gotta keep it fresh and interesting. Plus, I mean, who doesn't love a good ghost story? The Queen Mary is one of those places on my bucket list. I'd love to just be surrounded by history and who knows, maybe have another ghostly encounter. But that's a story for another time. I hope this helped prep you for the spooky season. Next week, I have a Halloween true crime tale that is sure to make you check twice. Thank you for tuning in this week and continuing to show your support. Stay spooky, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!